हाय वेलकम टू आर चैनल ऑफ इग्नो ऑडियो बुक्स इंदिरा गांधी नेशनल ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी स्कूल ऑफ परफॉर्मिंग एंड विजुअल आर्ट्स एस ओ पी वी ए सर्टिफिकेट इन परफॉर्मिंग आर्ट्स भरतनाट्यम सी पी बीन ओवा जीरो जीरो टू अंडरस्टैंडिंग इंडिया आर्ट फॉर्म्स ब्लॉक वन इंट्रोडक्शन टू परफॉर्मिंग आर्ट्स यूनिट थ्री डांस थ्री डांस थ्री पॉइंट वन इंट्रोडक्शन Art has that indestructible quality that outlasts life, its conditions, trends and all the changing conditions of this dynamic world and transcending the barriers of time. It affects people in a very deep and moving manner. This is true of all art and especially of dancing because it is totally dependent on the human body and is considered most malleable art and it is the oldest art. Before man can achieve anything he must breathe and move this movement is the source of life and dance is the supreme movement which was very essential to primitive life the dance is the mother of the arts music and poetry exist in time painting and architecture in space but the dance lives at once in time and space the creator and the thing created the artist and the work are still one and the same thing rhythmical patterns of movement the plastic sense of space the vivid representation of a world seen and imagined these things man creates in his own body in the dance before he uses substance and stone and word to give expression to his in the experiences havelock ellis who is considered to be an all time great thinker in the field of sociology Dancing in its widest sense is the personalized human reaction to the appeal of a general rhythm which marks not only human life but the universe. It is this rhythm which regulates the universe and is the most essential and basic requirement of human life. Dancing is an arrangement or pattern in space as architecture and painting and sculpture are and employs spatial rhythm. And like music, it is an arrangement in time employing rhythm thus dance is the only art which can be called time space art employing rhythm in both the spheres audible and visual it is to be remembered that almost all over the world dance and music can be described as two sides of the same coin especially in india dance cannot be even thought of without music it is precisely due to this association that both dance and music have been taken into the fold of natya both music and dance have been elevated from folk to the classical level and it is the lofty confluence of these two arts which is reflected in our classical dances times objectives after studying this unit you should be able to a understand the great value of dance in our cultural ethos b be able to distinguish between the indian concepts of drama and dance and C able to evaluate few functions of the four avenues in dance especially the classical ones 3 to dance as a social phenomenon Havelock Ellis Firthwell explains that dancing has been a very important part of the human society from its most ancient primitive times dancing is a basic primitive medium of expression for religion as well as love this concept of religion applies to the most primitive society when the homo sapiens simple human race evolved as also to the most advanced civilizations love spells existence for all living things including man there is love in the animal kingdom as well as man it being essential for procreation or continuity of the species or the race as the case may be but it is in the human race that dancing is elevated to the highest level where it is called art this art of dancing is very closely connected with very basic human traditions of war labor pleasure and entertainment education etc many of the great philosophers and thinkers of the most ancient human civilizations have taken dances of a particular society or a race or a tribe as the foundation on which its moral or ethical life must be woven thus dancing applies and appeals to the multifaceted human life touching it at its highest and deepest moments 3.3 dance in india 
India is considered to be the cradle of dance. Every Indian loves to dance. 1. Can say that every true Indian is born with the ability to appreciate and love. Dancing in any form. Dancing is an inherent and one of the most important components of the Indian society at any level. The Indian dances for social occasion like birth of a child, marriage, religious festivals, social functions and even death. Any excuse is sufficient to propel the Indian to dance. He dances in courtship to attract his mate, he dances when the marriage takes place, he dances when the child is born and is given a name. According to the prevalent custom, he dances to celebrate death as divine sanction, which releases the human being from the worldly bondage. He dances with great joy when the rains come down to irrigate the parched land after the intense heat of summer and he dances to celebrate the coming of spring, the dance of thanks, giving after reaping a rich harvest as he salutes the mother earth for sustaining him and his tribe. He dances to propitiate gods, to invoke their blessings. He also dances to appease spirits of darkness in events like natural calamities, epidemics and any misfortunes that he may have to face. Times. He even dances, war dances and hunt dances by imitating combat like or hunting. Like movements. He even dances to practice black magic and spells. And, most importantly, he dances to entertain other when he achieves proficiency and is termed as an artist practicing and presenting his art. 3.4 Sublimity of Indian Dance Dancing is elevated to the highest state where even the gods dance. Shiva dances. Is dance of creation and destruction. He is the supreme dancer who activates the universe and thus is called Natraja the king of dancer actors. In fact he is the presiding deity of the art of dancing, Lord Krishna dances the eternal rasa with the gopis of Gokul and so is called Natwara. In the Indian society, dance was considered an essential part of the education of princes. Many of the ancient and medieval kings and queens were proficient dancers. Many kings and their high ministers were so closely and deeply connected with dancing that they wrote learned treatises on dance. No royal ceremony was complete without the dance performance. In the temples the deity is worshipped by following a strict series of rituals. Whereas in the evening the deity is entertained by way of music and dance. Dance in India is the most sublime activity which guides one towards spiritual bliss. 3.5 Emergence of Nritya At this junction you would very naturally ask a question. If both, drama and dance in India have almost the same components, then what is the difference between the two today? You must remember that in the ancient times when Sanskrit drama flourished in India it always had the elements of song and dance in its presentation. We have examples of this in the Sanskrit plays of Kalidasa, Bhasa and others. There are other playwrights also who invariably used this technique. And yet, the practice of dance by itself flourished along with drama. For instance, in Kalidasa's play Malviknagnimikram the heroine is an expert dancer and her guru a very accomplished teacher. There is mention of many types of dances like Churchari, a dance which is not performed anywhere today. So we can presume that dance was being practiced as an individual art and was undergoing development. But its deep association with the Nityashastra and its rules which came to be Subsequently interpreted and reinterpreted by successive aestheticians and dance. Masters gave it a very unique quality wherein the dramatic element was never ignored, only this element was suitably adapted for dance idiom. Thus, in the later times from Bharata, there emerges the third element of stage. Presentation, Nritya, which combines both pure dance with the depiction. F. Human emotions resulting in, emotive dance. This dance, Nritya, uses the Angas and Upangas to represent the human emotions, Bhavas, which appear in a song or lyric. 3.6 Ancient Take 1 NLQE of Dance 
the technique of dancing that emerges is seen to be made up more or less of the same components as that of drama proper and as first codified by Bharata in the Nakya Shastra. The components are 1. The four Avinas, Sakvika, Angika, Vachika and Ahaya. 2. The four Vrikis, Satatvaki, Avaki, Vaki and Kashiki. 3. The two Dhamis, Nakya and Loka. Ilk later centuries when the technique of dance emerges as distinct from drama. Proper, it becomes apparent that dance utilizes drama as one of its aspects in the same manner as Nakya utilizes dance. Similarly, in the later era, dance comes to be further classified into Tandava, Vigorous, and Zasya or Sukumara, gentle types. Again, the Nitya Shastra does use these words but not in the manner of this firm classification. The fourth chapter of the Nitya Shastra dealing exclusively with dancing calls it Tandava probably as emanating from Tandu and Zasya, which is mentioned as Lasyanga. But the later writers very definitely give the twofold division into Nritya and Nritya on one hand and Tandava and Zasya on the other hand. But whatever the era and its classification, the components of the technique remain the same. Here then the question arises, if the components are the same for Nakya, inclusive of dance and for dance inclusive of Nakya then where does the difference between the two arts lie? To answer this question the nature and importance of each component will have to be examined and its importance and relevance to both the arts determined. 3.7 Classification of Dance In the classical Indian tradition, dance is divided into two major categories, Nritya and Nritya. Similarly, there came into currency another classification namely Tandava for Forceful dancing usually associated with male dancer and zasya for soft and graceful dancing usually associated with female dancer. Nritya, it is pure or abstract dance which is mainly decorative and does not convey the meaning of words. Nritya, it is emotive and interpretative dance where the meanings of words or the songs are interpreted by way of stylized and codified movements of the different limbs of the body. These movements are accompanied by appropriate facial expressions depicting various human moods and feelings. In the modem terminology we can best describe Nritya as mime. It is also referred to as Abhinav since it employs the depiction of various sentiments and moods. It must be remembered that Nritya also uses Angika Abhinav for this purpose, only since it is to depict ideas and moods, the entire concept of Abhinav is geared towards this end in the Nitya Dhami mode being applied Vachika. Avina is made use of an implied way by means of lyrics either in the form of straightforward poetry or a narration set usually to some raga and thal. Though there can be just a recitation without any raga or a chant without any thal. 3 to 8 The Four Avinayas A. Sakvika Avinaya The production of rasa, the aesthetic experience, is the prime object of A. Stage presentation according to Bharata and the entire Nitya Shastra can be classified as a working manual for the actor, dramatist etc. to contribute their individual share towards the creation of rasa. This creation and enjoyment of rasa, the aesthetic enjoyment of an artistic creation, is also called Sakvika Abhinav. B. Angika Abhinav. This Abhinav deals with the physical activities and movements of the body and is represented by gestures and postures. In Angika Abhinavi, it is the Mukuja, facial expressions, combined with the Hastas, hand poses, that is most relevant to the conveying of ideas and the creation of rasas, sentiments. This does not mean that the others have no part to play, the body functions as a whole and so the other parts of the body have to follow suit. It only means that the other parts play a secondary role. See, Vachika Avinav. This Avinav deals with the use of speech in a stage representation. This would include the Swaras, the musical notes to be used in the songs, playing of instruments etc., stana, pitches, kaku, intonation, etc. 
D. Ahaya Avinay. This Avinay deals with the use of costumes, jewelry, makeup, etc. In a stage representation. Thank you. Subscribe to our channel for more updates, and we will see you with the next chapter.